All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you today. And um, uh, good morning again. And also, good morning for those watching online. Uh, just wondering if you are in Surabaya, I want to invite you all to join us on site as well. Uh, it's a good day. It's a good day to be uh, worshiping the Lord uh, in His house, to be together with brothers and sisters in Christ. It's always a good day to celebrate His grace on a Sunday service like this. And I just want to encourage everyone this morning to, uh, to enjoy the gospel through the songs, through the Word of God, through our fellowship, our interactions, and, uh, and even, even through uh, all the things that will happen throughout the day. So this is always a, a day to give thanks to Him. Let's express our worship. Let's express uh, our love to God by participating in worship this morning. With that, I would like to invite everyone, let us all stand and let's uh, prepare our hearts to begin our worship. Church, let's um, begin our worship this morning by acknowledging that we can boldly approach the Father's throne of grace, knowing that the way there has been open through the perfect sacrifice, the perfect redemption of God the Son in Jesus Christ, and that this gospel truth, this gospel joy has been poured into our hearts by God the Holy Spirit. So as you come to worship this morning, may the favor, the blessing, the joy, and the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. You may be seated, church. Praise the Lord. Church, today, whatever our situation, let's come to worship God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, because he's de He deserves that. Let's come to the altar and put everything that we feel, what we have this morning. Drink from the well, Jesus is calling. Come this, oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the Father. God of Sing with us this morning. Live behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there is no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Come on, church. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new land is born. Jesus is calling, oh come, oh come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was brought with the precious blood. Father's arms 
Now I give you time for a moment of confession. For all the bad deeds that we've done and all the good deeds that we failed to do, this is our time to confess all of those to the precious God, to the holy God. I give you time, church. Listen to the word of God. In him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. He is our savior, the wonderful savior. Let's sing hallelujah. That Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah! Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior! Oh, what a Savior! Forgiveness was what with the 
precious blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you because you have already given us the best. You gave us redemption to Christ's blood and the forgiveness according to your riches of your grace. This morning, Lord, we are together with the body of Christ in this place and also in around the world. We want to worship you. We want to glorify your name with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, because you deserve that. Thank you, Lord. We surrender everything in your name, in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Everybody says, Amen. I invite all of us to stand up. Church, what you believe. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten from the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of the same essence as the Father. Through Him, all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. He became incarnate by the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made human. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day He rose again according to the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will never end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. He proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He spoke through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We affirm one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We we'll look forward to the resurrection of the dead and to life in the world to come. Amen. Why don't we say hi to our neighbor? It's good to say good morning and also happy Sunday because we can see each other. And also we know that sometimes when we uh, have the redemption, we need to share that. And we shine because God has already shone in our life. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. The river flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Come on, church. Stand for your word, Lord, and let there be light. Let's shine because God has already shined for us. Sing with us. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness. Shine, Jesus' light.
awesome presence. Lord, I come to your awesome presence. From the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Prayer, Lord. Fill this land with the Father's love. Replace, replace. Use us. If we have already uh, redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, it's now our time to glorify His name. Amen. Let's be a blessing. If you want to clap your hands, you can do it. To God be the glory, great things He has done. So love in the world that He gave us His Son, who yielded His life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may. Perfect redemption. Oh, perfect redemption. The purchase of blood to every believer. The promise of God. The violence of who truly believes that moment from Jesus. Pardon, praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the front. Through Jesus the Son. And give him. It's time for us to listen to the Word, to the Word of God. In the world of uh, full with uncertainty, God and Jesus is the answer to our prayer. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Yes, Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want speak the name of Jesus. Never I fear and all anxiety. To every soul held captive by depression, I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. Your name is power.
shout Jesus in the mountain, Jesus in the street, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the street. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus. Amen, amen. Can I invite the kids for Sunday school and the teachers or the parents who will be with them? Are you kita do aya? Hey Caroline, Calvin, Caleb, Crystal, right? Benaria. I know. I can tell. Do you know? All right. And then Satria and Phil. Yo, kita do aya. Lord Jesus, thank you for the gift of these children as they go to start Sunday school this morning. Please bless them so that they can enjoy your love, your power, and all your promises. Bless the teachers as well, the parents who will be with them. Give them wisdom and compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Off you go. Bye-bye. And Charmander as well. Now that's, that's a Charmander. <laughs> all right. Um. Oh. Okay. Um. So many things in life can annoy us. I'm just wondering if I ask these questions. This question: What is it that annoy you the most? Small things, small things. Because I know you are annoyed by big things. You don't like the war. You don't like the pandemic. So I, I get that. But let's let's start with something small. What small things that annoy you? Job masing-masing di rumah. Small things that annoy you. For me, small things that annoy me. What one of them is, as I'm going to sleep, everything is dark. Everything is relaxing. You're about to depart to the wonderful land of sleep and rest. The AC is blowing, you know, and there's no sound of uh, mouses or tikus on this, you know. And just everything is just nice, you know. Uh, and then suddenly, as you're about to go to sleep, as you want to hit that spot, you know, you hear the sound. Ning. You know what that is, <laughs> right? Like, like that sound when you're about to go to sleep and then, ah, oh, you know? That's why I really hate that when, when that happens, you know, when a mosquito, somehow, he or she or it, 
<laughs> he knew the perfect spot to push my button. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, kok bisa pas gitu loh di telinga ya? Like, why don't you go cross other place? Why is it on my eardrum? So always wake up and cranky and get my what is that? That uh, uh, badminton, not not badminton racket. You know, one of those electric thingy. You know, to swat the mosquito. Man, that's. That really annoys me. It really annoys me. That's why I am always on a crusade against mosquitoes, you know? Like, that's, uh, that's one of the things that perhaps God made a mistake in creating. No, no, no. Uh, uh, small things, right? I don't know what your deal is, but maybe you have these small anno- things that annoy you, you know? The traffic is bad. The internet is slow, you know? You want to work, then suddenly... You know, mati lampu. What is that? You know, uh, uh, suddenly the power is out, right? You know, uh, or or uh, uh, people are not uh, doing things that you want, right? In 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 a, in a meeting, everyone is talking, everybody, everyone is contributing, and but that's one guy, or one girl is just silent. You know, small things, small annoying things. Perhaps we see this as something mundane, as something uh, inconsequential, meaning it's just something sepele, you know, something uh, feeble, fickle, something small. And yet, we know, right, some small things can become big things. Something minor, minor event, like, I don't know, traffic, people coming in late, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the sound is not working, the PowerPoint is wrong, right? Minor things can, can become a major upset, you know? You know? When, when, when people are not saying something that we want, a non-issue become an essential issue. An innocent gesture for one can be interpreted as a crime for another. Like when you WhatsApp the girl that you are dating and then, hey, I miss you, and then you never hurt her back, right? And then you have that read status, the double blue thick, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, uh, wait for your, her reply, an hour later, you're still waiting and checking, what does this mean? Are you ignored, rejected, you know? And then sometimes you become, you know, too much invested, and then, hello, are you still alive? You know, that kind of things. Something innocent, you know, maybe he's, maybe she's sleeping, maybe she's on a meeting, maybe the phone is dead, you know? You don't know. But, see, that kind of things, some things that annoy us can reveal about our hearts. That we can have this crankiness of the soul. You know what I'm saying? Kayak kita bisa, bisa apa ya? Tadi aku pakai apa kata-kata apa tuh waktu kau satu. We can have this uh, uh, jiwa yang rewel gitu. Right? Like this crankiness of the soul. This, 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 this deep annoyance about life, about people, about, about my situation. And you just want to complain and, 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 and angry at God, angry at people. That our ego somehow gets bruised so easily. And, and today, if you are in that kind of place, it's time to elevate things. It's time to get out of this ego drama. Kita banyak drama kadang-kadang ya. Berhubungan dengan ego kita. It's time to get out of this ego drama and into a gospel, a drama, a theo drama, when it's all about God, it's all about Christ. And so with that, I want to invite you all to open with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 until 22. As we want to see how something small can become something big and destroy a lot of things. And God is going to teach us, hopefully through the word, through me, to understand the dynamics of how we can respond to unexpected things. That's why the title is a change of plan. Because we're going to see that Paul changed his plan and then that creates a problem. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 15 to 22. 2 eh, Corinthians 1, ayat 15 sampai ayat ke 22. Ya. Let me read for you. 2 Corinthians 1, 15 to 22. Because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first, so that you might have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. 
Was I facilitating, facilitating when I wanted to do this? Do I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, Sylvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, who has also put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Amen. Let's, let's pray one more time. Lord, we come humbly before your word. Help us to understand. Help us to enjoy. Help us to respond uh, well. Move us, O oh God. Open our heart. Open our minds. Prepare our life to be shaped, to become more and more like you. Father, enable me. I'm a weak and sinful preacher so that I'll be able to explain the word and preach the gospel this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, if you remember, uh, fourth Sunday means we learn about the Second Corinthians uh, letter, right? So the story goes something like this. Just gonna do a quick recap, okay? So Paul planted the church in Corinth. He's the one who started this church, the Corinthian church. He was there for 18 months, one and a half year. He was pastoring, teaching, counseling, raising up local leaders, okay? And then, after one and a half year, Paul left because God called him in another place, in Ephesus, in, in other places, right? When he left, the leadership vacuum was filled, unfortunately, by false teachers. And these so-called super apostles, that's what they call themselves, right? He, they, they, are, they don't like Paul. They infiltrated the church and they turned the church against Paul, Okay? Jadi guru-guru palsu ini sengaja membuat Paulus itu enggak disukai sama jemaat Korintus. Seperti itu. For instance, they say, oh, look at Paul. He's the apostle. But how come as an apostle, his life is full of suffering? Because if you are really chosen by God, your life must be full of blessing. That shows that he is not a real apostle. And they also say, Paul is not, is not an impressive speaker. You know, he doesn't have the charisma. You know, one of those people that when, when he or she walk into a room, suddenly just, whoa, right? He's here, he's here, everyone just stop. Paul's not like that. He said, Paul, is, is, his, 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 his letters are weighty. Kalau nulis berbobot, kalau nongol, ringan gitu. You know, when, when he's away from us, yes, his letter is, 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 is uh, weighty, but his presence, his, his preaching, yeah, you know. And then he also said, you know, Paul, unlike other teachers, he refused compensation. What? Paul is too, too, too rich for us? You don't think we are, we are rich enough to give salary to Paul? You know? See, they tried to discredit Paul and his ministry. And here, we see another personal assault. Di sini kita menemukan lagi serangan kepada Paulus. You know what? kind of attack that they gave this time? Something as simple as a change of plan, a change of travel plan. Something as mundane as a travel plan became an assault to Paul's character and integrity. So we're going to see what's going on, okay? Why is it that just about a travel plan makes it, uh, makes it a, a conflict? And yeah, somehow it's not working. Uh, next slide, along, yeah. Agak nggak jalan. Uh, see, something unexpected happens. <laughs> uh, travel plan. Okay, so here's, 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 here's what's going on. Paul's original travel plan in fifth, verse 15 to 16. Let me let me just go back to you. I was because I was sure of this. I wanted to come to you first so that you might have a second experience of grace. So what is that? That's not talking about the second manifestation of the spirit. No, no, no. Uh, it's talking about his travel. Okay, that's why in verse 16. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. So. Basically, Paul is saying, hey, I wanted to visit you guys twice. First, on my way to Macedonia, I'll stop by to at Corinth. 
And then after I reach Macedonia, I'm going back to Judea or to Ephesus, I'm going to stop back at Corinth. So double, uh, second experience of grace means uh, the double benefit, uh, the, dub- the double visit. Okay, so you can see Paul is has this. He is he is joyfully anticipating his visit. He wanted to go. Okay, he wanted to bless them by his visit. However, things change. Our plans change, right? Um, rather than. Uh, bore you with all the details about Paul's itinerary, historical and cultural, uh, you know, uh, factors. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, let you off with that. Basically, what happened is Paul said, hey, I'm going to visit you twice, but things are not going to happen because there's a conflict. I'm just going to be with you once. With that kind of uh, change of plan, it opens falls into the charge of him being fickle. It was this change of plan that opened him up to the charge, to the accusation, oh, Paul is being fickle. Paulus ini kok plan plan. That's why in verse 17, yeah, okay. All right, am I? Okay, the accusation. This is what, what, what's going on in, 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 in the mind of the Corinthians as they, oh, Paul's not coming. Verse 17, right? Um, was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? The word there, I can't pronounce it again. <laughs> Is it vacillating? Vacillating? Yeah. Um, it simply means vacillate. Yeah, vacillate, right? I know vacillate, but I know it's vacillating. Okay, uh, the, the word means to act irresponsibly, to show fickleness, to take matters lightly. It's like, you know, I make a plan, but, you know, yeah, I'll come. If things are, you know, if things work out, you know, sometimes we do that, especially now the, the Gen Zs, they say, they say yes, but at the same time, no. Like, like I'll come if there's nothing better to do. Kind of, you know, kind of thing, like fickle, very, very fickle. Yes, I'll be there unless, there's always an unless, right? There's that kind of fickleness, you know? Yes, I'm going to come if there's nothing better out there, I'm going to come. So that kind of charge, atau kita ngomongnya ini Paulus sak pena edewe gitu ya. He's just doing whatever he wants. That's why in verse 17b we continue, do I make plans according to the flesh? To say yes and no at the same time. According to the flesh. The idea is that Paul is very worldly. Ini orang duniawi sekali. Cuman mikirin dirinya. You see? Paul is acting out impulsively, depending on the mood. Oh, I want to go. I'm going to go. Oh, I don't want to go. Too many conflict in Corinth because they have conflict, right? I don't want to be. I don't want to put myself in an uncomfortable position, so I don't want to come. Oh, uh, I think I should go because if I go, I look better. I look going to be the, the, the pastor is responsible, so uh, you're going to promote my status, you know. So the Corinthians assume Paul has this worldly attitude according to the flesh. That he wants to advance his own interests and not the interests of the gospel. And, and people are taking a jab at him. Maksudnya, orang-orang pada mengkritik dia. Mencemarkan nama baiknya. Everyone is kind of slandering on the guy who started and planted and loved the church. His, their own community. See, I think today is not uncommon to see Pastors get criticized. Churches get criticized, right? Um, and uh, criticizing pastor has evolved lately. You know what I'm saying? Like the digital age. The digital age is wonderful. Now you can share gospel uh, content, right? Just going to share it at social media, you know? And it is a wonderful blessing to have, you know, uh, the gospel and, and, and the word of God right at your fingertips But at the same time, social media also gave us what? Outlandish preaching moments, you know? Like, you can use a sermon clip, and that sermon clip, taking taking them out of context. That sermon clip get weaponized, you know what I'm saying? To attack, the per- to attack the pastor, to attack the preacher. See, he said this about this bad person, bad pastor. He did not look at, we don't look at the whole sermon, but just five seconds 
of a misspelled word, you know, of something, a, a slip of the tongue, of, of, a, of a, an inaccurate theological description, you know, and then suddenly, heretic, <laughs> suddenly racist, suddenly, fa- I, I don't know, all, all, all bad, bad charges that we can throw at people simply because we judge them simply from a, something as quick as a sermon clip to catch preachers in the act, so to speak. Oh, this person is, oh, this, this church is abusive. You know what happened? Look, look at the clip. They, they do this and they don't see the whole thing. The sermon clip get weaponized. Now, I understand that sometimes, yes, we should have confront people and pastors and churches about their teaching. We can have substantive disagreement with sermons. For example, Martin Luther, he, he, his, m- m- several of his writings were anti-Jewish writings. Okay? He, he, he did not like the Jews so much that somehow his writing is used by Adolf Hitler to justify Nazi regime. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, it can be a dangerous... We have to be careful because Hitler used Luther's writing. But at the same time, we have to be aware, right, that we can accuse people, we can judge too quickly. To, and and, and this, train, this, 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 this digital instantaneous uh, 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 dynamics maybe is training us to be a good critic more than a good listener, right? Like, like the sermons is like, a, ah, gotcha, you know, that, that gotcha moment. Ah, ketahuan lo, ngomongnya salah tuh. Wrong info, wrong theology, bad theology, you know? That's why it's, a, it's, it's getting scary to preach in public and now I'm got in, in uploaded into YouTube, right? I don't know, maybe in 10 years from now, someone just open this sermon and they'll see, Edo said this, he must be not reformed. I don't, or, or, I don't know the kind of accuse that I got, you know. Uh, that can, can create such a paralyzing effect on preachers, right? Like, do you want to be reduced to just one bad moment in your life? Like, like you know, and sometimes we do that. We look at people and we reduce him to just his one mistake and we forget his a million good deeds. Right. That that is why uh, I I still remember uh, one of my uh, professors in seminary. Uh, he he according to him he said, if you're a pastor and your member congregations want to have counseling with you, I recommend maximum counseling of the same issue of the same issue. Okay, three times he said, maximal counseling. Tentang isu yang sama tiga kali aja. Why? Why? Why three times? Well, maybe if three times the issue has not been resolved, you might not be competent enough because you are not trained, let's say, as a counselor or as a, or as a psychologist. So you might you should have the humility to you know uh, show him or her to the right professional. But at the same time, the second reason is more interesting. If you continue to counsel a person and that person is not ready it can create an overly sensitive reaction. For instance, let's say there is a member, you, one of you, come to me, and we talk about, let's say, your marriage. Okay? And every time you came to me, every time of counseling, that's all that we talk about. And so, here's what can happen. Every time I preach here, <laughs> I don't intend to talk about your marriage. I don't intend to talk about your problem. But somehow, you can presume, oh, Edo is talking about me, <laughs> you know? But I'm not. Do you see what I'm saying? Because, because of that, 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 that kind of uh, vulnerability, you know, I'm not saying that that, that kind of uh, advice, has, it, it's true all the time. I'm just pointing out that we can be overly sensitive on certain topics, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just saying something neutral. I'm just saying something objective. I don't mean to offend anyone. I don't mean to attack anyone. But someone at, at your position can, 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 can think that as a personal attack. Do you know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's what's, what's happening here. So, so we, have, we have to learn from the point of sight of, can, can, we, can we be more forgiving? Can we be more open and, and, and patient? 
See, from, from the Corinthians' perspective, Paul is like saying, let's go back to the text. Paul is saying, yes, yes, and no, no. It's like, yes, yes, I'm coming over. But what he really meant was, no, no, I'm not coming back until later. So they concluded Paul did not, Paul did not care about the church. Paul cannot be trusted. Now, Paul did change his mind. Okay, he did. He admitted that. He he said, "Yeah, I I I I'm I'm just coming. I'm just coming there once." However, we're about to see together that Paul is changing his travel plan not because he doesn't care, not because he is fickle, but because it's better for the Corinthians. He's doing it for their own interest. He's doing it out of a gospel identity that loves the Corinthians. So let's 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 look at how. Paul is uh, 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 responding, how Paul is communicating this. I put the subtitle, a theological response. Because, you know, when someone slanders you, when someone talks bad about you, kalau ada orang yang nyinyir sama saudara, betul kan ya? Uh, sensi, gitu kan? Uh, what do you do usually? Someone slandered you, you know, talks Bad, talks bad about you. What do you do usually? Usually, you know, we, we, we want a clarification. We want to explain things. We want to get people on our side. You know, I'm going to explain things. You don't trust me. I have people who trust me. So we create these tribes. You know, we are ready to go to war. My camp against your camp. You know, we, we, we have allies. We, we rallied our people to fight against this, 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 this battle of, of, of uh, you know, accusation, right? Paul could have done that. Paul could have explained. You know, guys, I, I wanted to come, but Pertamina naik harganya. You know, I wanted to come, but the transportation is difficult. You know, the weather is bad. You know, things happen this way and that way. You know, we have, we have, I, I, I cannot come back because of A, B, C, to, you know, all the situations that's, that's happening. But no. Paul could have done the normal things that we would have done when people talk bad about us. Paul instead opted for talking about God. Somehow, in the midst of that travel plan, misunderstanding, accusation, you know, Paul talks about the gospel. Verse 18 to 20. Let me just go to verse 18 and 20 first. As surely as God is faithful, see, he's talking about the faithfulness of God. Our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, of whom he, whom we proclaim among you, Sylvanus and Timothy and I, was not yes and no, but in him, it is always yes. For all the promises of God find their yes in him. That is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God for his glory. Let me, let me just help you out. What, what is Paul doing here? Because when I'm reading this, like, what's happening? Why is he suddenly talking about the gospel? What's the yes and no here? Paul is basically saying this, okay? Paul affirms that God is faithful. And God has faithfully worked through him in the way he decided not to come twice. Okay? Here's, here's, how, to, here's, here's how we get his logic, or at least the way he responded. Paul says that, look guys, God has entrusted me with the message of the gospel. Right? That Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus is, in his language, uh, Jesus Christ is, yes, in uh, the promises of God find their yes in Christ. That's, that's basically uh, saying that, you know, God said yes to his divine intent to save his people. Right? So, uh, this is Paul using, explaining the gospel, but, but, uh, using languages that is close to their situation. That's why yes and no, yes in Him, you know, that kind of things. Uh, Paul is saying God is faithful. God is consistent. God doesn't say yes today and no tomorrow. The gospel is yes, today, tomorrow, forever. Jesus is the Messiah. Not just today, but tomorrow and forevermore. Do you see how he's, he's, saying, how he's saying, guys, 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 God is consistent. The gospel is consistent. And because God has entrusted me, I have proclaimed the gospel. I have lived out the gospel. 
in the Corinthian church and you have accepted the gospel because that's why they say, that is why through Him, we utter our Amen. Amen means, yes, I accept kind of, yes, this is God, right? So um, Paul is basically saying, guys, God has entrusted me with the gospel. You guys believe the gospel. This is something big, something major. If you can believe me about something major, as major, as important, as glorious as the gospel, why can't you trust me with something as small, as mundane, as feeble, as a change of plan? Ngerti ya Bapak Ibu ya? Kalau saya udah, kalian sudah percaya sama saya, sama hal yang begitu besar, yaitu Injil Yesus Kristus, kok bisa sih? Kalian tuh nggak percaya sama hal yang jauh lebih sepele, yaitu gak jadi teko. <laughs> Nggak jadi datang masa gitu aja dipermasalahkan gitu. Just simply because I changed my travel plan and then you accuse me of being, you know, uh, irresponsible, uh, did not care, and other negative thinking. So Paul is basically saying, guys, look at, look, you know, my method is different. You know, uh, my plan is to come to you twice, but I changed the plan. Because, because I believe this is best for you. Because, because I, I, I'm, I'm always coming back to the gospel. I, I, I ask God about this. There's a, there's a verse in second, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 Corinthians 16, ada slide-nya tolong ya, um, that kind of says that, you know, I will come to you if the Lord wills. I, I, I hope to spend some time with you if the Lord permits. You, you, you see, even, even, even before Paul has hinted that I love you guys, this is my plan, but God is more important. Basically, Paul is defending himself by trusting his reputation with God. Paul is taking God seriously and not himself seriously. Sometimes we go the opposite. <laughs> we take God less seriously and we take our feelings, our rights, too seriously. Right? That's why when we are slandered, what do we do? We want to fix everything. We want to control everything. We want to control the narrative. Whoa. But often, when we try to defend ourselves against the accusations of people, we, uh, that, that often that comes from a fear of people instead of a fear of God. The motivation, you know? And sometimes we can make things worse by being so defensive. Pernah nggak sih kita membela diri sering saking membelanya malah oh, pasti ini, you know? Uh, you, 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 you defend yourself. You try to explain. Oh, it's not me. It's not me. Ah, it must be you. You know? It kind of, you know, there's kind of weird things that's happening. You know? And what worse is that when we take ourselves too seriously, we can become a person who can't let things go. And anytime it comes up in a conversation, we are angry, we are bitter. We end up on a war path to attack that person back to a, a path of revenge. Oh, you slander me, I'll slander you back. You talk bad about me, I'll talk bad about you to your mothers. And, you know, you revile me, I'll revile you back. See, Paul... Look at his situation from a very God-centered lens. And basically, maybe this is what we can learn. We have to learn to be okay with people misunderstanding us. We, we, we have to be more afraid of taking sinful actions because we want to get a revenge rather than having our names forever tainted. I'm saying, kadang-kadang kita harus lebih takut berdosa gitu loh daripada kita lebih takut nama kita dicemarkan. We have to be afraid, you know, uh, sinning against the person who has sinned against us more than we are afraid of having our reputation tainted. Because remember Jesus. Jesus was slandered, right? Jesus kan divitna abis-abisan. Jesus was accused, falsely accused. He was falsely accused by religious leaders, by friends, by family. And yet, there's no in the Bible PR campaign to clear the name of Jesus. Yeah. Gak ada tuh. Kampanye PR. <laughs> Why? Because Jesus was, uh, was on a greater mission. 
I love you. You don't agree with me. That's okay. I love you still, but I have a greater mission. I need to save humanity, basically what Jesus said, right? That's why there's that verse. Jesus said, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. Jesus is even saying, rejoice when you are falsely accused because of me. Wow. Kalau kamu difitnah gara-gara namaku, bersuka citalah kok iso. How come? Because when we, when we feel that, you know, uh, persecution, falsely accused, we understand how Jesus must have felt. At that time, you are connected to Christ, you see. That connection to Christ, the privilege to suffer with Christ and like Christ is a precious spiritual moment. So, so Paul here, basically, hey guys, look at God. Look at what He has done. How can you not trust me? And finally, he closes with this. Finally, he closes. I think Paul is very sweet. In verse 21 and 22, he talks about, basically, he talks about unity. Unity. Notice the words us, us, us. Kita, kita, kita. So many things in the final two verses. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us, who has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. You know, here Paul is closing this, you know, closing this uh, uh, anonymity, closing this hatred or conflict, this tension with saying, guys, basically, if I can simplify a bit for the sake of time, is that, guys, we are in the same family. We have the same Holy Spirit living in us. Look at the Spirit. The Spirit is the one that anoints us. The Spirit is the one that uh, uh, put His seal. Uh, we are together. Put His seal means we belong to God. Uh, he has given us His Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee what is to come. You know, Paul is basically saying, guys, 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 come on. We are in the same team. We are in the same family. And guess what? We will end up in the same destination with God in heaven. That means the spirit that is working in your heart is working in me. Therefore, my decision, Paul is saying, my decision to change the travel plan is not worldly decision. It's a spiritual decision. Angkap ya? Roh yang bekerja di dalam dirimu, jemaat Korintus, itu juga roh yang bekerja dalam diri saya. Maka pada saat saya memutuskan untuk berubah rencana perjalanan, motiva- motivasi saya bukan duniawi, motivasi saya rohani. That's why you have this, the, the spirit language as community language. So, I just love how Paul is very God-centered, and he loves the people, and you can sense that. So, how how, how can we, how how should we respond? I have I have two conclusions. First of all, very simple, right? Don't jump to conclusions about people. Don't jump to conclusions when things don't happen the way you want, especially with people, right? Paul was attacked over something as simple as a change in travel plans, and we can overreact sometimes, right? And sometimes maybe even we think the worst about a person, even a person that we've known for a long time. But however, I want to submit to you that if someone you know, he or she has proven to be faithful in the past, devoted in the past, don't be quick to believe accusations brought against him or her, especially if the accusation comes from an outsider. As children of God, we learn to be patient, we learn to be compassionate. We learn to give the benefit of the doubt, we say. Kita kasih kesempatan mereka untuk menjelaskan kalau ada wadahnya. You know? We give her an opportunity to explain, hey, what's going on? And don't always look for some sinister motive. Di balik batu nggak tentu ada udang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Di balik batu gak ada apa-apanya, batu kok. You know, is, that, what, what, is there any metaphor that we have in English? <laughs> yeah. Di balik batu gak selalu ada udang, Bapak Ibu. 
Cuma ada udara gitu loh ya, gak ada udangnya. Sometimes you always know there's a something behind, you know, this guy is doing this, must be because he's such a bad person, he's greedy, he's worldly, he's whatever, all the negative reactions. One of, uh, uh, one of the story that I heard this from other preacher, not, not myself. Uh, he told this story. So one day, maybe I've, I've shared this before. I, I certainly did. I've shared this sermon, this story before in my sermon a few years back in, during the pandemic. So it's on, online. Maybe you haven't watched it, but this is story goes something like this. So there's a wife. She's busy cooking, cooking for lunch. And um, the husband is, uh, he promised that, you know, uh, because the husband has been at, unfaithful in the past, the husband wants to, you know, make amends. He wants to show that, I, I, I have repented of my past mistake. Uh, I have been unfaithful to you in the past. So from now on, every lunch time, I will go home and eat lunch with my family. Okay? And the husband is uh, self-employed, so he can uh, adjust his schedule quite easily. So at 11 p.m., the wife is cooking, right? And then she uh, shouted to uh, her boy, a five-year-old, uh, they please call daddy, right? Or, you know, uh, they please call daddy, ask, ask daddy how, what time is he coming back? Usually, he's coming back at 12. You remember that phone number, right? Yeah, okay, I'll call, said the little boy, five-year-old little boy, the, the son. So, um, the mom continues cooking. After a while, the boy came down and he said, uh, mom, I have tried calling dad. And the mom heard that, tried? What do you mean try? So, you did not hear your dad answering the phone? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, I called, but when I called, it's not dad. Uh, who is it? Is it the right number? Yes, this one, right? Oh, yeah, that's that's dad's number. Who answered the call? Some lady. Oh, a lady. Is it the same voice? How many times you call? Three times. How many times the woman answered the phone? Three times. Is it the same woman? Yes. How do you know? Same voice. Wow. Suddenly, you know, the one that is boiling is not just the soup, but his, her heart, you know. <laughs> the soup is boiling, so is her heart. Her anger, oh, you know. 12 p.m. The husband never came. Oh, you know. Hell almost break loose. Lucifer as at the door. Yeah. 1 p.m., husband showed up. And without any, you know, any preparation, without just suddenly the wife goes berserk, you know, like just a launch, you know, where have you been? Who answered your phone? You must be with another woman. Who is it? Tell me, what's her name? You know, kamu <laughs> kumat lagi. And then the, the, wife, the husband was like, no, 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 I'm so, no, 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 uh, darling, I, I was just late. You know, traffic in the Majan Sungkono. Uh, you know, <laughs> whatever like it, yeah. Uh, you know, traffic in Arif Rahman Hakim, you know. <laughs> just traffic, you know. Uh, and, 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 and no, uh, no, no one, I, I've not been with another woman, just you. you know? But no, but, 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 but uh, our son, he called you. And then, and, then, and then a lady, a woman answered your phone. Who is it? Gak usah pura-pura bohong. And then she said, you, are you saying that our son is lying? Our son is a liar? No, 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 no. And then she, you know, we were just, you know, just uh, ready to battle it out, right? And then the husband simply asked the boy, his son, uh, they, you called this number? Yes. Okay, uh, how does the woman sound. What does she say? And then the boy said, oh, this is what she said. The number that you are calling is also of the surface area. Please try a moment later. So that's a, <laughs> that's a voicemail, you know, right? Like automatic voicemail when you try to call and some lady computer phone, computer voice answered, right? So look at what happened in this <laughs> kind of uh, childish maybe, I don't know. We tend to Prioritize our feeling first. Itu yang pertama tuh. Kita pasti mentingin perasaan kita dulu. Mentingin pikiran kita dulu. And the, the wife, especially the wife, why did she think badly? She is triggered 
by her wound, right? She is triggered by the past. Dia terpicu oleh kenangan buruk, makanya dia langsung hajar aja pasti suamiku selingkuh lagi. She was triggered by that. And the boy, he was limited in his knowledge. He did not know. He cannot tell the difference between a computer voice and a real actual human voice. Both. This one, you know, put the feeling first. This one, put his knowledge first. And then things go bad. I'm, I guess I'm saying to you guys as simply this. You know, learn to put God first. In the In, in, in the moment when things unplanned, unexpected happen, things that you don't like, things that you, uh, you plan and then just kacau semua, just, 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 everything is just, you know, did not go as planned. Something small, I'm not talking about something big, like traffic or flight delay, slow internet, car breaks down, you are busy and then your kid got sick. Aduh, repot kok pas anakku sakit, you know? That, that kind of things don't go as planned. Don't jump to conclusions about people and don't jump conclusions about situation. Simply say, one of, the, one of the things that you can do simply this. When unexpected things happen, traffic happens, simply say, God is here. Jesus is here. God is good. And Jesus is the proof that God is good. I'm having a bad day. But a bad day doesn't mean God is bad. Angkat bapak ibu ya. Hari ini memang lagi nggak hoki. Itulah kalau ngomong orang sehari-hari ya. Hari ini memang ya semuanya kacau. Tapi hanya karena hari ini kacau. Bukan berarti Tuhan tidak pegang kendali. Just because today is my plan is, you know, all over the place. Doesn't mean my God is less powerful. He is still good. He is still in control. He loves me. Because Jesus died for me. Did you see that? So, so don't jump to conclusions. Don't judge quickly. Adopt this kind of, kalau ada bahasa kerennya itu, non-judgmental spirit. Not like a Eastern philosophy. Not non-judgmental because we have God on our side. And secondly, finally, okay, adopt a gospel-centered life. I know that sounds very cliche, and maybe not cliche, but sounds very wreck. <laughs> Sesuatu yang sangat wreck banget deh, gitu ya. Adopt a gospel-centered life. But here's, just the, here's the background. I think it's quite odd. Paul is talking about travel plan, and then suddenly he think about the cross. Oh, come on. I mean, you think about the cross with something more with something, some topics that are more glorious, right? You know, talk about lost souls, talk about the church, talk about ministry, talk about forgiveness, and then okay lah, nyambung banget ke Injil gitu. <laughs> of course, you can connect that with the gospel. But come on, this is just talking about travel plan. Ini ngomongnya lagi liburan gitu loh. <laughs> it's, like, it's like talking, it's, not, it's like being on a vacation and suddenly you think about the gospel. Because, because Paul is so gospel-centered in his Mind that he doesn't have to think much about it. It's like a reflex. I'm saying. Jadi hidup dalam Injil itu kayak reflek gitu buat uh, seperti ya reflek ya. It's a it's a it's a uh, instinct. It's an instinct. So everything, even the small thing, can be connected to the gospel. It's like it's like learning a new language. You know. You. You gain fluency, anda jadi fasih. How do you know when you are fluent in language? You're not just translating, right? For me, Indonesian to English, that's not fluent yet. Fluent means you interpret everything from this language. So, for instance, I learned this when I'm preaching like this. Right now, I don't think Indonesian at all. Okay, I think in English. Uh, some people, some of the challenges, right, really will know, Pastor Willie will know, of, of preachers here, is that they speak in English, but they still think Indonesian. That is why you have the accent. That is why you have the funny word choice, you know? Funny word choice, like, are you sick? And then he says, sick what? You're not having delicious body? Right, that's a joke. You're not having delicious body? You should enter with, <laughs> you know? Tau oh, ya, yeah, not delicious body, but then, enak. <laughs> 
And I, I remember my pastor was saying, yeah, everybody has a, has a rubber watch. Rubber watch? Oh, jam kare, telat. <laughs> What's a rubber watch? <laughs> you know. Well, it's different, right? Uh, fluency means we, we, we don't translate again. We, we think in English or we think in whatever language that you are learning. It's the same. God wants us to have a gospel fluency. To be able to translate the world around us and the world inside us through the lens of the gospel. To, to think, to feel, to sense, to evaluate, to design everything in the light of Jesus and His work on the cross. So, so, so the gospel becomes your mother tongue, so to speak. Injil jadi bahasa ibumu. So that everything you, you, you connect to Christ. Whether you are serving in the church, whether you are uh, you know, uh, working, whether you are having a meeting with people, whether you are watching a movie, whether you are driving, you know. And when you do so, when you are growing in, in gospel fluency, you are transform yourselves. And I know that most, most of the time, gospel fluency simply looks like just trying to do the right thing. Okay, you, ya ini kan gak ada bedanya dari melakukan yang jadi orang baik gitu kan. But I think it's different. A gospel center of my life means that you kind of that have that uh, a turn towards Christ. Every single thing, you remember Christ. And, and the gospel really becomes, becomes power, perspective, example. This, this needs practice, church. Ini butuh latihan, gitu ya. This needs practice. And, and as, as you know, we need our, to have our own practice with our own life. But at the same time, the best way to learn a language is how? To immerse yourself in the culture, right? To immerse yourself with a community that speaks the language. Jadi kalau kita mau fasih ngomong Injil, kita mesti masuk di komunitas yang ngomongnya Injil terus. That is why, that's what we're trying to build in the rec, Right? Here, all the things that we are trying to do has to be immersed by gospel values from, from music, from prayer, from the word of God, from the way we handle meetings, from the way we, 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 we do things. Can't, we can't do it alone. We need examples. We need to be immersed by a gospel community as well. So let's adopt a gospel-centered life. But I want to I wanna close with this. Uh, at the end of the day, you know... Uh, not everyone is like Paul, right? Some people will fail you. Some situations will upset you so much, right? Um, circumstance will change and, and you will be shocked and you will be kind of, oh, I can't take this, right? The best technology can fail. The best plan that we have can, can fail. The best information can be wrong. Even the best people in the world, they can turn evil, Things in our life can change for the worse. But thank God that we have a loyal Lord. We have a consistent Christ, so to speak, right? We can always trust Him. In Christ, God remains loyal to His people. His, His word is always right. His promise is always good. His purpose always wins. So, when you feel that your world keeps changing, your heart keeps breaking, people keeps disappointing you, things keep shifting around, you know, and uh, look at the gospel, look at Christ again. He is loyal, He is consistent, He is faithful. You can trust Him, you can hold to Him, and He will carry you safely. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for today's word. Help us to reflect a bit a while about this and forgive us Lord if we are uh, too uh, stubborn if our heart is too uh, uh, too hard and that we always think badly about situations about people help us to have a uh, you know uh, awareness of your love and your power help us to be uh, to to see things from your eyes so that even when unexpected things happen in our life, unexpected things that people do to attack us, even when those things happen, we can always return and find strength and refreshment and rest in the gospel, in the good news that Jesus has lived, died, rose, and now interceding for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us to 
be a person who takes ourselves seri less seriously and takes God more seriously. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, it's time for us to give the offerings. In this, uh, in this church, we give offerings not because we want to be blessed more and more, but in this church, we are giving this offering because we are already blessed. You can use uh, this QR, and if you want to give it physically, you can uh, do that in back of our uh, room, there's a bucket, and also have a best giving. Thank you. Welcome to International Training Agreement. This is our church. This is our home. Our warmest welcome to all of you, especially to those who join us for the first time. To connect with us, or if you need someone to pray for you, please don't hesitate to call these numbers. And join our online morning prayer every Saturday at 5.30 a.m. Please register yourself through the link here to get more information. Let's get connected in our discipleship group. We have one in our each local church. Do take note of the day and time for each group. Let's support one another and grow together as the body of Christ. These are all for today. Happy Sunday and God bless you. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Again, so now welcome uh, all of our members. Uh, good to see you uh, again this morning. And I also want to welcome for uh, first time guests. And if you haven't been here for a while, good to see you all. And if you are new, uh, coffee is on us, so there you go. Uh, and I also want to encourage uh, members, if you see someone new, please say hi, you know, uh, get them some coffee and snack and just, you know, uh, be friendly and, and have, uh, let's have fellowship after, after the service. Thank you guys for today for uh, uh, serving. A uh, few things uh, I want to highlight, first of all. Um, next Sunday, we will uh, celebrate uh, the holy matrimony of Fenson and Ferro. That's uh, our, um, the membership at, at Darmo. Uh, I want to inform and announce uh, their uh, uh, wedding and their marriage plan. If any of you has any major and serious concerns about the, the holy matrimony, you can come find me uh, afterwards. Uh, but if not, uh, we want to, you know, support them. We want to pray for them. We want to disciple them uh, as they are, uh, will be married next Sunday. And related to that, the couple has uh, invited us if we uh, have the time 
uh, to come for their holy matrimony. Jadi untuk pemberkatannya, ya, uh, they will have the uh, ceremony next Sunday uh, at 1 p.m. So basically uh, after lunch. So next Sunday I will be here. I will be preaching. I will be leading the Lord's Supper. After that, uh, izin dulu, Bapak Ibu. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll let you know that I'll be off to the ceremony to bless them. If you would like to join us next Sunday, please let me know by today. Uh, they need RSVP due to the size of the room. Oke, okay. jadi kalau Bapak Ibu rindu mau hadir untuk pemberkatannya, mohon informasikan kepada saya hari ini ya, hari ini supaya saya bisa sampaikan kepada wedding organizer untuk bisa mengatur tempat dan fasilitas dan lain-lainnya, gitu ya. So, uh, Vincent and Vero wedding next Sunday. Next, uh, I want to encourage again for our anniversary July 19 at Pregen, uh, yeah, and we really growing. Okay, so this is our uh, outing slash anniversary, and one of the special things that we're gonna do besides gathering together all rag in Surabaya, the one in Batam will have to join in spirit. Uh, <laughs> obviously, I mean they're in Batam, right? So, uh, <laughs> uh, so please register soon. Join us there. And one of the special things that special things that we are we are, we are going to do is that we will uh, pray, bless, and ordain. Anda kutip ya, pernah bisan of the new elders of Rec. Uh, so uh, the people that are elected, I apologize, we don't have the slide at the moment, uh, but I can tell you, uh, two of our brothers is here. Uh, they will be ordained, or they will be. What do you call it? The tabiskan, yeah, betul ya. That's the uh, direct equivalent. Somehow, anyway, you get my point. They will be announced. We pray to pray for as elders, and uh, they they are Mr. Dave David Christian Horman, and then Mr. Henry Christianos over there. Yeah. So these are the two representatives from Reg Darmo. They will be there. Their family will be there, and to if we want to support and and pray for them. You know, and and I've I've been informed if there's any kind of like again same with Fenson and Ferro any last minute concern major concern about the two of them that you might think can be a stumbling block for the church please let me know by July 9 okay uh, but I'm confident we can support but anyway you know uh, if if there's any any concern at all uh, you can talk to me by July 9 uh, if not then we will be celebrating God's grace in their lives and other elders at REC together on July 19. And with that, finally, I promise you, last one, I know it's 11.30, you are all hungry, uh, is that uh, we are you know, promoting and selling some merchandise that you can buy to support the anniversary event, which is usually the T-shirt. This is 100,000. Uh, rupiah, we want to purchase that to support our event, and then also you can have this mug. By the way, you can see the mug downstairs to kind of check it out. Jadi di bawah mug ini ada sampelnya, bapak ibu, bapak ibu bisa lihat, bisa cek seperti apa kualitasnya dan lain sebagainya. This mug is eighty five thousand. Okay, so you can check it out downstairs if you want to purchase to support us in uh, for the anniversary event. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for me. Let's all rise. Let's pray together. Uh, Jesus, thank you so much for today that we get to uh, praise you. We get to worship you. We get to uh, confess our sins, declare our faith, listen to your word, and interact with the body of Christ. Thank you, God. And, and we want to pray for the collection, the offering. Bless this collection, Lord, so that it can... Truly help people so that the offering can advance your agenda. Thank you for the privilege of giving back because you have given us first your precious son in our lives. Lord, we also want to pray um, for the ordination and for the uh, uh, preparation for the new elders of REC. 
uh, we pray for all of the candidates and their family who will be there coming July 19. We pray, God, for uh, their preparation uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually so that they'll be confirmed, they'll be more and more affirmed in their conviction to serve you through the local church. Please give them what they need, give them direction, wisdom, so that they are ready to serve you together with us. Thank you, Lord, for your wisdom in leading them, in uh, propelling them, encouraging them to say yes uh, to this privileged uh, opportunity to serve you in uh, eldership capacity. Thank you, God, and help us as a church to love them, support them, work with them, pray for them, and be uh, their allies, their brothers and sisters, as we want to uh, serve you, Lord, and uh, glorify your name uh, through uh, these uh, new elders and, and, and new deacons as well. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is our prayer. We live them. Uh, up to your name. Thank you, Lord. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now let's give our final worship honor and glory to our triune God. Glory be to God the Father. Glory be to God the The Spirit, great Jehovah, three in one. Glory, 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 while eternal ages run. Glory be to God the Father. Spirit, pray Jehovah, three is one. Glory, 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 while eternal ages run. Now church, before you leave and get sent back into the world, receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of God the Holy Spirit be with us all from now on until forever and forevermore. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, church. The service is over. God bless you. Happy Sunday. And I'll see you downstairs.